in this video, we're going to talk a little bit more about LOTUS. Uh, so LOTUS, short for Law of the Unthinking Statistician, also soon to be uh, your favorite flower. Uh, LOTUS is a really interesting and useful tool that, that we can use, but it's, it's tricky the first time you learn it. And no matter how many times people tell you it's interesting, no matter how many times people tell you it's easy or it's useful, it's tough to sort of believe them until you really get a feeling for it yourself. And I think it's, it's difficult to sort of understand because the formulas seem kind of vague and um, ambiguous, but here I want to show you that uh, LOTUS is actually very intuitive and it's just doing something that you would do yourself, uh, just sort of written in, in, in formulaic form. So what, what is LOTUS? Well, two forms we've seen so far are the expected value of x, so the mean of a random variable. Sorry. Uh, the mean of a random variable. equals the sum of little x and the probability x equals little x. This is the PMF of x, the probability that the random variable crystallizes to a specific value, times that specific value, summed over all values. It's important here to remember, as it is in any introductory statistics uh, sort of setting, what is random and what is not random. And the random stuff here is the capital X. Is, let me make sure that's clear that that's a capital X. Um, capital X is are random. Lowercase x's are our specific points. Okay, so that's the simple form we've seen of Lotus. We've also seen chalk is bad. Um, we've also seen the expected value of a function of x. So the expected value of g of x, again capital X random variable, equals the sum of g of little x, the values that x can take on, times the PMF x, probably the sum of all. Okay, so these are the formulas. You've seen them. Uh, you don't really understand. Maybe you know you don't you don't buy into them as much as, as as you should. Okay, so let's let's think about this with an example. Let's think about a simple random variable x. Okay, so we're simple random variable x. We're going to have right the values that x can take on, and the probability a little higher. The values that x can take on, and the probability that x takes on those values. Okay, so simple you know PMF value takes on. Let's say this is, you know, simple random variable takes on values 1, 2, and 3, and let's say it takes on these values with probabilities of 1 third, we'll say 1 half, and 1 sixth. You know, these probabilities add to 1, so it's a valid PMF, it's a valid random variable. And this is a simple example, but it, it makes sense, right? Like, a third of the time this is 1, a third of the time this is half the time it's 2, and a sixth of the time it's, it's 3. Okay. Now imagine if you were asked to find the average or the expected value of x, big x, right? This is just saying on average, what will this crystallize to? And you, you know, based on this table, you can probably figure out what this is, right? You're like, okay, well, it takes on the value one a third of the time, right? So a third of the time it's gonna be one. And a, you know, half the time it's gonna be two. So I have two. Half. And then the rest of the time, one sixth of the time, it's gonna be three. And that's, you know, it's, it's sort of just, it's very intuitive. It's, it's a weighted, weighted average, like this percent of the time is going to take on this value, and we'll sort of, et cetera, from there. Um, and this actually matches the, the formula we have up here, right? We're taking the, the values, one, two, three, that's the little x's, the values that big x can take on, times the PMF, times the probability it takes on these values, right? Like here we have one is x, and one third is the probability that big x equals little x. And we just sum over all cases, and that's, that's what Lotus is doing in this simple case. So super intuitive, makes sense, it's something that you would do on your own. The trickier one is, is this guy, the, a function of big X, right? So this, you know, you're starting to see the light on this one, maybe not on this one yet. Let's imagine if we created a new random variable, so we have X and now we're gonna consider X squared, right? So X squared is clearly the value that X takes on and we square that. So we, we can kind of expand our table here. We have X squared, okay, I'll just erase that. Um, we can expand our table. We have you know, little x here, the values that big X can take on, and little x squared, these are obviously the values that big X squared could take on, that the random variable x squared takes on. So here, you know, I, if big X takes on one, big X squared takes on one. Big X takes on two, big X squared takes on four. It's two squared, uh, et cetera, that becomes nine. Okay. And this is what you would do if someone asked you to find, right? Sorry, I should, I should have said this first. <laughs> if someone asks you to find the expected value of x squared, like on average, this is just saying on average, um, 
what is x squared, right? This is sort of what you would do. You'd say, okay, well, let me square my big X when it, you know, square the values it comes out to. Um, and now it's pretty clear how you would proceed, right? Like, it, that big X squared comes out to one a third of the time. It comes out to four half the time. So four half, and finally it comes out to nine one sixth of the time. Right? That's intuitive. And if you look at it, it matches this equation, right? For instead of just having x, so one, two, and three, we have g of x, where here g is the square, the function g is the square, so we have one squared plus two squared plus three squared, and then the probability that x takes down all those values. So once you actually break it down in a simple case like this, you know, obviously we're working with random variables that have larger supports, they take on more values. Once you work on a simple case, you see that Lotus is just kind of doing what you would do yourself, right? If you want the mean, you just take a, sort of a weighted average. If you want the mean of another distribution, you do this like little transformation, you say, okay, square it, and then find the mean of this. And all in all, Lotus is very intuitive. Uh, we're gonna be using it a lot in the discrete case and later in the continuous case, so it's important to sort of be able to wrap your head around what it's doing.